Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we all know what this is about, and uh, you all have been after Justice Thomas. We are fully aware of this. And I, I think that uh, the whole charade is truly disgusting. Now, if we go back to the Dobbs leak, and I'm one of those, I'd like to know who the leaker is, and I'd like to know why they did it. But since that leak, our Supreme Court justices, especially Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Barrett, they have been subjected to threats on their lives. Their families have been subjected to threats on their lives. And yet, this is what you and Senator Whitehouse are choosing to focus on, is a discrediting of the court. And we know what this is about. We should be talking about protections for the court. I, I think that it appears that what you're doing is you're going after them because right now you don't agree with some of the decisions that are coming out of the court. So instead of letting them exercise and fulfill their jobs, what they're required to do, what are you doing? Do You're going time. after a way to delegitimize the court as an institution. Tennesseans know this. We see it. But, you know, Senator Graham mentioned Justice Sotomayor. Now, this summer, what we learned was that over the years, her staff has pressured public institutions to buy her books. And these books and her book deals have earned her $4 million. And I haven't heard you mention that. None of you have mentioned that. You don't want to talk about that. Nor have you mentioned the fact that she refused to recuse herself from not one, but two copyright infringement cases concerning her book publisher. You clearly don't want to talk about that one either. So I have filed an amendment issuing a subpoena to Justice Sotomayor's staff who helped to sell her books as well as to her book publisher so we can fully understand the backstory of these deals. And since we're in the business of issuing subpoenas now, here are a few more that I filed. A subpoena to Jeffrey Epstein's estate to provide the flight logs for his private plane. Given the numerous allegations of human trafficking and a sexual abuse surrounding Mr. Epstein, I think it is very important that we identify everybody that was on that plane and how many trips they took on that plane and the destinations to which they arrived. I've also filed a subpoena authorizing Secretary Becerra to come before this committee and explain to us how HHS and the Office of Refugee Resettlement has lost track of 85,000 children. In addition, I filed a subpoena to compel the Biden DOJ to provide all documentation about their disastrous decision to terminate the successful China initiative. That was a program that was critical to targeting and prosecuting Chinese spies in America. Next, we've got to get to the bottom of the far left's effort to take down President Trump. That's why I filed a subpoena for all documents relating to any political donations and participation by special counsel Robert Mueller's staff. And let's talk about the two tiers of justice that we're all seeing in the Biden administration. This administration loves to talk about misinformation, but they clearly have the goal of censoring conservative speech online. In the latest example of this, DOJ, on behalf of the FTC, filed a privacy and securities practices suit against Twitter. So I think we need to get to the bottom of 
President Biden's efforts to silence Elon Musk. That's why I filed a subpoena to compel DOJ and the FTC to provide all documents related to the investigation of Elon Musk. So, Mr. Chairman, I think there are real issues that we should be talking about, social media and the way it's destroying our kids' lives. Wall Street Journal has an article in on this today. Our southern border is wide open. It is a vulnerability. The president's administration has lost track of 85,000 children. The world is on fire. But what you have chosen to do is to launch an assault on the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. If you want to take up our time and go there, Mr. Chairman, we can all go there. I think this is a sad day for this committee and for the confidence that the American people would like to have in our institution and in this prestigious committee. Thank you, Senator. Um, when I recognized you, I didn't know what subject you wished to speak to. As I announced at the beginning, the first thing we'll consider the two judicial nominations, then we will move to the subpoena, and I see people seeking further recognition on that issue. So after lengthy debate on these nominees at the last meeting, the question is- Mr. Chairman, I, Chairman. I, I want to speak on the judges. Senator Cotton. Did, no, you go ahead, you speak Tom. The judges as well? I'm, Thank you, Madam President. On November 10th, the 160th Special Operation Aviation Regiment lost five soldiers when their helicopter crashed during a training flight over the Mediterranean Sea. Their names are Chief Warrant Officer 3, Stephen R. Dwyer of Clarksville, Tennessee. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Shane M. Barnes of Sacramento, California. Staff Sergeant Tanner W. Grone of Gorham, New Hampshire. Sergeant Andrew P. Southard of Apache Junction, Arizona, and Sergeant Cade M. Wolf of Mankato, Minnesota. In honor of the brave night stalkers of 1st Battalion Charlie Company, I want to recite a few portions of the night stalker creed for the record, and I'm quoting. Service in the 160th is a calling only a few will answer, for the mission is constantly demanding and hard. And when the impossible has been accomplished, the only reward is another mission that no one else will try. I serve with the memory and pride of those who have gone before me, for they loved to fight, fought to win, and would rather die than quit. End quote. I ask unanimous consent to include in the record the complete Night Stalker Creed. Without objection. On behalf of all Tennesseans, I want to offer my prayers and support to those soldiers' families and to the brave men and women of the 160th. Their motto is, Night Stalkers Don't Quit. And I would encourage my colleagues to join me in supporting them as they bring the spirit of those words to bear against our enemies around the globe. I ask that the remainder of my remarks be placed separately in the record. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Every year I visit all 95 counties in Tennessee, and while the expectations of local leaders vary from urban to suburban to rural areas, two things remain constant. They expect lawmakers to act in the best interest of the American people and to act in good faith. Now, last Thursday, Chairman Durbin and Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee seemed to fail those tests, according to Tennesseans, because when they convened the hearing, they wanted to authorize subpoenas for Harlan Crow, Leonard Leo, and Robert Arkley. Now, the claim was this is all about transparency, but the only thing that they're willing to be transparent about is the contempt for the Supreme Court and for the American people who still believe in the importance of the U.S. Supreme Court. 
Now, if they cared about protecting the Supreme Court, they would have shown more concern about the death threats against the conservative justices that were coming from the far left wing of the Democrat Party. There's no good faith to be found here. This is yet another political assault against conservative justices who issue decisions that many of the Democrats do not like, and we have seen it before. So they take this approach. If you can't pack the court, rewrite the ethics rules. If you can't rewrite the ethics rules, just use the Senate to launch a mass prosecution of your political rivals in an effort to force my colleagues to show the American people where Democrats truly stand on protecting their, the country's best interest, I proposed a few amendments of my own to that subpoena authorization. Well, those amendments proved to be a little bit too politically inconvenient for the chairman. So, here are the amendments that I proposed and things Tennesseans have wanted answers to. Now, this summer, we learned that Justice Sotomayor's staff had been pressuring the public institutions that host her speaking engagements to buy her books. The, she got a $3 million book advance, not reported. She's made $4 million on the sale of the books. We also know that she has refused to recuse herself in not one but two copyright infringement cases that involve the publisher of her books. So I filed an amendment issuing subpoenas to her staff and her publisher so we can get to the bottom of this ethical conundrum. I also proposed we subpoena Jeffrey Epstein's estate to provide the flight logs for his private planes. Given the numerous allegations of human trafficking and sexual abuse surrounding the late Mr. Epstein, I believe the committee has an interest in identifying everyone complicit, no matter their political affiliation. And we also need to get to the bottom of the investigation into Elon Musk. We know that the Biden administration gets nervous at the thought of conservatives speaking freely online. So it's no surprise they're trying to weaponize multiple federal agencies against Mr. Musk and his company. I proposed a subpoena to compel the DOJ and the FTC to turn over all documents related to that sham investigation. The far left is the enemy of free speech and their hostility toward conservatives is on display in the form of their repeated efforts to take down President Trump. So I filed a subpoena amendment for all documents related to any political donations made by special counsel Robert Mueller's staff. And for the executive branch, we have a couple of amendments that are filed. The first would authorize a subpoena for Secretary Becerra to come before the committee and explain to us how his agency has lost track of 85,000 unaccompanied children, migrant children who have come to this country. I've talked about this several times on the floor. How can you lose track of 85 thousand migrant children. They did it. We need to know. So that's why they're getting a subpoena. The second would subpoena the DOJ to provide all documentation concerning the termination of the China initiative. Now that was one of the best tools we have had to fight against Chinese espionage and t Chinese uh, spies on U.S. soil. Now, if I were Chairman Durbin, I wouldn't want to debate those subpoenas either because they strike at the heart of one of the Biden administration's most dangerous governing principles. There are two tiers of justice in this country. Obviously, that's the way this administration wants it. There is 
one tier of justice for people the Democrats need to protect and for their cronies and buddies and friends, and one for people that the Democrats need to destroy to maintain their hold on power. Tennesseans are deeply afraid of what this means because they know where they stand in this new approach of two tiers of justice. I don't know if or when Chairman Durbin will reconvene to discuss these subpoenas, but I hope that when the time comes, he will abandon this latest assault on the Supreme Court and allow the committee to pursue real accountability. Uh, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Booker. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here. Uh, the last few weeks, I've been demanding some answers on Jeffrey Epstein's crimes and trying to get these flight records. I've offered amendments to a subpoena, trying to get that, and kind of been stonewalled on it. But I think having transparency around Jeffrey Epstein's conduct and this massive sex trafficking ring that he built is important. And of course, you've had the chairman, Senator Hirano, Senator Ossoff, all who have mentioned our concerns with what is happening with CSAM, what is happening with sex trafficking. But in light of this, I, in looking at some of the survivors from the Epstein issues, uh, there are disturbing allegations that the FBI failed to investigate the sex trafficking allegations. And indeed, one survivor says that the FBI, even after she brought forward repeatedly content about his conduct, that the FBI refused to investigate her claims, even though she said the allegations were there on both the sex trafficking and the child sexual abuse material. And I want to know why or what, you, what awareness you have of the FBI's failure to investigate these claims. And I want to get you on the record, since numerous survivors have said the FBI did not show up to help them, uh, what specifically has the FBI done to investigate the claims that Epstein's and others participated in, produced, possessed, and distributed CSAM? Well, first let me say I uh, recall uh, very well that you have a, a very specific and longstanding interest uh, not just in child sexual exploitation but in human trafficking uh, as, a, as a cousin of that. Uh, and we appreciate your focus on it and your support uh, of the importance of that part of our mission. As to the Epstein case specifically, I will tell you it's been a while since I looked at that case. Obviously, we worked together with prosecutors to bring charges yeah. before he... Um, I realize yeah. that. Yeah. But what we need from you is a complete investigation of why the FBI did not take this up and then getting to the bottom of what is appearing to be an enormous sex trafficking ring and listening to these survivors. You know, and as I said, I've tried to get the, uh, a subpoena on the flight logs, which I think is important to this. I, I think people need to know who, were on, who was on those planes and how often they were on those planes. I think people who invest in companies would want to know if there are people from their C-suite. And as we go through this, should those logs be made public? They've been heavily redacted. Well, as I said, it's been a while since I looked at the specific case. Uh, I can tell you that we've been increasing year over year both the number of agents focused on these kinds of cases, the number of well, victims we we've rescued. And, then, yes. and, I'm, and so on to the specific case, uh, let me uh, offer to have my, get, let me get with my team and figure out if there's more information we can provide to. That would be great. Yeah. We have never, even through the Jelaine Maxwell trial, we never got to the bottom of this. And we have these survivors who say, oh, there is so much more. Hmm. They swept it under the rug and that is wrong and you need to right that wrong. 
Before I uh, ask questions, I'll yield in a moment to Rank Member Blackburn for her opening statement. Uh, I just want to say before I do um, that I have observed few members of the Senate who have demonstrated a more sustained commitment to child protection and the prevention of child trafficking than Senator Blackburn. Uh, and we identified early in this Congress that the protection of vulnerable children was an important shared priority. We've also collaborated uh, with the introduction of the Filling Public Safety Vacancies Act to empower local law enforcement with the resources they need uh, and are now working together to try to pass our Report Act, which would, uh, Mr. Perez, as, as you alluded to, empower NICMIC to provide law enforcement agencies with more and better information to prosecute online uh, child exploitation. So I thank Ranking Member Blackburn for her collaboration uh, and participation and yield uh, to you now, Senator, for your opening statement. Well, and thank you for that. And yes, I think our Report Act is scheduled to go on the hotline today. So, and it already has a House sponsor. I want to thank each of you for being here. And I, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the, the hearing and for building this out a little bit. Mr. Perez, I so pr appreciated your remarks. And we're doing this at a time that I think so many people have lost sight of how important it is to protect children. And to your point, Mr. Perez, how important it is to go after these traffickers. And they're out there. You know they exist. They're on social media. And uh, Nick Mick is trying to go after them. And it is vitally important that we go after these traffickers and these people that are making a profit off of going after the most vulnerable among us. And I, I know the chairman knows, uh, some of you may know, for the last several weeks, I've been trying to figure out and to subpoena the records for Jeffrey Epstein's plane to find out who was on that plane. I've been so disappointed that Chairman Durbin has continued to block this because Jeffrey Epstein had probably what is the most high profile sex trafficking ring we've ever seen, ever heard about. It was high profile, high dollar people that were predators on these young girls. And I don't know why there is a push to block these records. Uh, we need to have access to this. We need to know who was on that plane, who was participating in this. They redacted those records in the Jelaine Maxwell trial. But getting to the bottom of this is important. And as we talk about protecting children, and providing for them, and the role of the federal government in this. For goodness sakes, let's try to figure out what HHS has done with 85,000 migrant children, and where they are, whose hands they are in, the labor trafficking that you talked about. Um, I, I find it unconscionable that 85,000 children we cannot find, just as I find it unconscionable that Chairman Durbin would have continued to block my request to subpoena those flight logs. But we appreciate so much that y'all are here today and Mr. Chairman, your leadership on these issues. 